2017 International Students for Liberty Conference in Washington, D.C. I'm here with Mr. Sheldon Richmond. Sheldon, always a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure to talk to you. Earlier I was uh, in the session when you and Jacob Hornberger were doing the F uh, Future of Freedom Foundation podcast you all do, The Libertarian Angle. Really good to hear. And the, the thing that's so extraordinary to me is that the Future of Freedom Foundation seems to be just about spot on on everything. And, you know, there's an issue with a lot of libertarian groups and, and libertarian-leaning Republican groups where there's, there's always an issue that's, you know, a little bit contentious. Now, I don't mean that we should nitpick, and I think you would agree as far as, you know, oh, this person's not good enough on this, but, you know, you have to strive for not purity, but consistency. And I, I think that groups like yours, the Future of Freedom Foundation, are do, and the Center for a Stateless Society, are doing great things as far as educating the students here about the consistency of libertarianism. And I think, I think it's, it's really getting through. I mean, the, the policy positions of this generation, this young generation, seem to be a huge improvement over libertarianism of the past. Maybe you could speak on that. What, how do you feel? Uh, I think there's never been more uh, done in the libertarian movement on foreign policy, on war, on national security uh, issues and uh, civil liberties, related civil liberties issues like surveillance. Uh, I mean, you can find things if you go back to as far as the 60s, uh, find things written, but it wasn't the chief interest. I mean, economics is, is, was uh, for a long time the main interest. A lot of uh, people came uh, through, uh, you know, having read Mises or Rand and <clears throat> it, it, while philosophy was of some interest, economics really uh, occupied the prime spot. Uh, it's in recent years, and you've really seen the momentum since 2001, where uh, libertarians have turned their attention, uh, and FFF I think is in the lead here, uh, to those issues. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's brought it to the attention to libertarians in a way that uh, earlier that wouldn't have happened. True, true. I mean. But it's almost surprising because war and foreign policy and such, it's inextricable from economics. Well, that's right. It can't be separated from economics at all. It will affect uh, how the market works because it requires a lot of government intervention. I mean, the military industrial complex is a, a huge diversion of resources and uh, labor to things the government is demanding, weapon systems and related things, rather than to uh, producing uh, consumer goods. So it does have a big impact. I think the weakness was, for a lot of libertarians, was that uh, they were limited government advocates, for, uh, for one thing. And so they would say, well, defending the society, defending the nation, is, uh, is, the, is the, one of the primary goals, primary uh, purposes. So therefore, we'll give them some slack in that area. And of course, a lot of abuse can occur. I mean, it's in my view, it's all abusive. But but even from their point of view, a lot of abuse can then get through that loophole that they've created. And but they didn't pay enough attention to it because they still had what the weakness was. The weakness was in the fact that they said, well, the core purpose is still legitimate, so we don't want to be too critical. And they didn't pay enough attention to it. And sure. I think that's the problem. You know, as as the movement has expanded in recent years, uh, there's been a criticism against purity tests. Of, uh, of libertarians, you know, there's some some sects of anarchists and such that they that think that um, you know we, we have to be a certain type of libertarian and have certain positions on policies and and, and um, philosophy and such. But you you've said something very interesting, I thought, which is that you know while we have to be inclusive of people, we also cannot completely abandon the moral and ethical underpinning of libertarianism. You know, is there is there a happy middle ground to reach there? Well, I'm, I'm always for working with other people and other groups that share uh, concerns with us. Like, uh, I mean, we, we've done work with progressive types who are good on the civil liberties issues. People like Glenn Greenwald, for example, or on the war issue. And, and it doesn't require us to, uh, you know, compromise our principles. We respect our principles. We can respect the integrity of, uh, you know, of their views and, uh, and not insist that they endorse you know, pure freed markets. Uh, I mean, that's not going to get you anywhere. It's going to, the coalition will fall apart. And I think if we're going to uh, uh, fight this stuff, it does require as broad a base as we can uh, uh, manage. So, um, you know, it may mean you don't talk about everything all the time, but you can anyway, right? The time is limited. And if you're working on something that seems very urgent, like war and surveillance, uh, it, 
it, it makes sense that, uh, to pay attention to that and not uh, get sidetracked by saying, well, let's talk about the minimum wage too, when you know you're not going to get agreement on that. So I don't think that, that requires any sacrifice or lack of integrity. Sure, sure. But it's important to maintain the integrity of a, of a holistic libertarian outlook? Well, I, th I think personally, yes. I mean, to me, I, I think that makes sense. I mean, it does fit together if it's, if it's uh, I, I think if your, your theory uh, fairly reflects reality, it is going to fit together. Uh, and, and there are plenty of opportunities in, in writing and in speaking to, to spell it out, to spell out sort of the dialectical uh, uh, approach that says these things are all interrelated. I mean, I wrote an article recently where I said that the warfare state and the, and the welfare state and the corporate state are all one, one piece one integrated thing. Now, you can analyze things separately, but you don't want to totally forget that each of them is part of a unified system and that they mutually support each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me, Sheldon. It's sure. always a pleasure. Same All right.